Good morning. This is a continuation of the House Appropriations Committee uh, hearings or our budget uh, testimony. Um, we have a change in our schedule. We were scheduled to have the Secretary of State in twice and uh, today and then again on Friday, but we really only need them in once. So we will hear from them on Friday, oh, okay. and that is going to give us some free time right now, which is oh. good because some of us actually have meetings scheduled, uh, like me, at 11.15 with, uh, with one of my budget uh, areas. But what we're going to do is take, out, take the opportunity right now to just kind of debrief what we heard last night in our public hearing testimony. So it is uh, not a formal type thing that we do, but we absolutely do go through the comments and, uh, and uh, hear from people and discern the, um, the, the trends that we heard last night. So with that, I will certainly take, take it away. And uh, I know one of the, we certainly heard there, there remains a lot of need out there. Me personally, the, the biggest thing that, is, that, that really impacted me is the child care issue. Um, it's, uh, uh, it impacts anyone who's trying to work who has kids. And uh, it, uh, it really makes it difficult if you, I remember, I remember trying to find daycare for my kids and it wasn't fun back then. So I can't even begin to imagine now. They're big enough, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I might be older than yours, and when I when I did it, um, it, it was really it was really hard. And I actually went to some home daycares, and I just left them in tears because there isn't the today. There's a lot more quality and a lot right. more oversight. I wasn't in this state; I was in Massachusetts, but but they were they were horrible options. They were just you wouldn't leave your child there, and so. Um, so, so I know how important it is. Even if they're there, you want to be sure there's the quality and all of that. And I think we've done a really good job with that kind of oversight. You know, you want when I mean, you're leaving your child, and you want them to be okay. <laughs> well, we were fortunate. We had uh, we had good daycares. Just a yeah. couple of them. It was. Do you have a spot for the day? And it was. We finally were able to come up with something. So, it was. But to me, it's a it, it is a problem that 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 is keeping people out of the workforce. We heard last yes. night. The uh, one of the last uh, the last uh, person I think she was last. Her husband's not going to be working because the daycare that they have is right. going to be the husband. Now, personally, as a stay-at-home dad, I think that's a wonderful thing. But what does that do to their budget? And what does that do to the business that he left? You know, there's a. Exactly. It's not just about one person. It's right. there's a trickle-down effect. So you have to spread out. Peter, I think that emphasis that we heard, at least from those who heard last night, was not so much on the parents' financial responsibility, although, of course, that's significant, but it was more about pay ranges for the educators, the, for the staff, in order to keep staff available. So, you know, we've got lots of programs in terms of this app and, and related programs that certainly Kimberly knows a lot more about this than I do, uh, that assist parents their financial contribution, but it sounded like the people we heard from were more interested in having more support for the staff person. But, and, and I think even beyond that, uh, beyond childcare, it's like every system that we have could use more funding. It's been underfunded and, the, I, the, you know, it, once again, to me, it demonstrated that COVID has sort of laid bare the, the brokenness of so many of our systems and the underfundedness of so many of our systems that people have been hanging on for a long time. That's um, certainly true. It, it certainly has demonstrated the interconnectivity of the entire economy. Right. You can't pull on one string without a whole bunch of other strings getting real short. And uh, uh, so it's you're, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. Yes. So, um, what in my mind was child care centers per se, but also the parent child centers, mm -hmm. which are two different sets of um, entities involved in child care. Yep. So I just yep. wanted to have those yep. parent child centers on, on the radar screen also. Yes, the, the parent child centers also run daycare. They do many things, but they also run daycares. Yeah. So, um, so that was my, that was, you know, overarching. I mean, there's a lot of need. 
but that one really struck a chord and maybe it's because you know we we're all parents and once upon a time we all wrestled with the i think i've got to find daycare for my kids so that one kind of struck a chord to me so let me just go around the table instead of having you know hands up that kind of thing and ask each each of you and one of the things we will have to do we haven't had time yet to read the the uh, submitted testimony but we will so Maida, what what really struck you please I'd like to pass for the moment and okay. trust reading since my brain was totally focused on I'm getting ready for Secretary of State. Yes. <laughs> so if, if it's okay, I'd like to be able to pass and come back. Sir, Representative Townsend is our uh, is our budget representative to the Secretary of State's office, so she was all plugged in and ready to go. And then I told her, literally, as you heard, uh, that, uh, that we're rescheduled for Friday. So, Representative Feltus? Well, I'm just looking through my notes here. We had two or three requests for what they call full funding of BHCB, and I think they meant by that the statutory limit that has the full funding, and I was going to double check that unfunded liability report to find out what that was. But I would be curious to con to compare what actually is the uh, funded for BHCB and add to that extra ARCA money that we're spending on things like conservation and, and housing to see what that total comes up to. And I suspect it's certainly far more than what GHCB is statutorily um, allowed to have or, or eligible to have. And, you know, if the shortfall is fairly small, but we're making up for it with all this other extra ARCA stuff, then I think that's something we need to consider. I, I was thinking the same thing last night that we have put a, a, a significant amount of money, rightly so, into VHCB to get a lot of things on the ground. The, the, the key difference in my mind, however, is ARPA money is more restrictive than general fund money. So, you know, it, but we only have so much general fund money and we have so much ARPA money. So it well, does make sense to, to the same places. Yes. Have yes. Right. yes. A little less flexible, you're right. But. Yep. We'll go around again, the, the table again here. So, you know, yeah, no, I, I thought the same thing. Representative Harrison? Well, I was going to mention the same thing. There was a couple of different organizations that mentioned full funding, and I don't know necessarily what are we short, what does that mean in dollars? The other thing that struck me, obviously, it's an opportunity for people. They don't come in to a public hearing and say, you know, cut the budget for X, Y, Z. You know, it's their opportunity to ask. What concerns me a little bit, um, maybe it shouldn't, but, you know, there are a lot of good causes out there, but every time you ask for increases in base funding, um, what does that do to our bottom line going forward? Uh, and, and I think we just have to have a better understanding. if. We want to give, you know, $6 million to the food bank, which now looking more and more like ongoing funding. What do we reduce to offset that? Or is the ongoing revenue going to do that without jeopardizing some of the other things we're, we're doing? So I just, we need to have a better understanding on that. But there were, obviously, there were some one time asks, and there was, uh, but there was also a lot of, base funding increases. I mean, working lands, it's a great program. You know, three million extra a year over the one million we've allocated. I mean, three years is sounding more and more like base funding increase um, to me. Um, one year is, is a little different if it was for a single project, but it's just something we all have to be cognizant of. And this committee has historically supported well uh, working lands. And of course, I believe we have a recommendation to bring working lands. I, I don't remember if it's in the, I don't know who has that budget. Uh, it's probably uh, to bring us up to an even million, I think, on the base uh, th this year. So there is. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not passing. No, I know that. On no, I know that. All I'm saying is they're, they're sounding more and more like ongoing base budget yep. items. Uh, so uh that's going to beg some really either that two years from now um i'm not sure i want to be on this committee uh quite frankly because it's going to be hard uh you know getting back to reality 
Um, so just a caution, that's all. And I will add so that the anyone who is watching would understand that our uh, base, uh, our revenue growth in out years for 23 from 22 to 23 budget year was quite significant. But from 23 to 24 and 24 to 25 and going forward, you're back in the two percentile range. So, so it, uh, hence your comment about, uh, about uh, and we, and we having to make hard choice. The budget, you know, like salaries and benefits yeah, are going to continue to increase. Yeah. You know, probably in the three to four percent range. Uh, yeah, so not more, but they could. So it's going to create a lot of uh, pressures that I just think we have to be cognizant of. Cognizant of. Yep. No. Well, point well made. Thank you. So. Robin. They actually were asking for fifteen million dollars for the working lands. Uh, oh, last you're night. right. You're right. We I'm gave sorry. them an additional three million. I think so five million adjustment. a year. No, no, no. Fifteen million a year oh. for three years. Uh, I thought he said over I, three. Well, now no, no it was for per year for three huh? years. It was for each year, fifteen million for each year. I mean, that when I was on the Ooh. working lands council that created the working lands yeah. board, that was the original goal. They let's like let's go bold, and okay. uh, they got them. Uh, under you know a million or a little less so um and then i was on the i was on the working lands board until i got elected and there was a conflict so i couldn't be on it but the money is certainly well spent 15 million is a yeah, huge yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, so i i, I, I think certainly we want to support them not necessarily to that amount but at least the million that you know we usually do because they they they're one of the few places where they look at return on investment and can provide us a true answer to is anyone better off? You know, how much have we done? Um, it, that's actually means something. So um, that's been a really good thing. But you know, again, the, the themes of child care and housing, I was going to say the Vermont Housing Conservation. Child care and housing have been the two biggest issues that we hear from our constituents and we hear from organizations. And that's really what people were talking about. Um, in addition to lots of um, pay increases for the underfunded agencies, which care is. Providers so many of them and i certainly understand that and it's scary to think about how we're going to make all that work and maintain the systems and find the money or not find the money and what happens if we don't find the money and so it's, it's uh challenging times indeed i think every time is challenging but you know cer yeah. certainly having a lot of money is challenging it, it is but then then overlaid with the pandemic before it to end if it ever does. Trevor. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe you could talk a little bit about the the one uh, retired uh, Department of Corrections member who talked about a real problem and recommended a a the market analysis. Yeah. I mean that's been talked about. They obviously have. That's a real issue what the answer is to that right now. Remember in the BAA, we gave them $5 million for retention. Yes. Workforce stuff. Uh, that's not going to resolve itself, though. Effectively. We have a new commissioner, and we'll be interested to see how he chooses to address some of the issues. It's not all about money. It's also about culture. It's just about what we talk about. Certainly took note of that, and uh, I'll be having ongoing conversations with the DOC and with the Corrections Institution. Okay. If, I, if I may turn to two other, two other things that are not big dollar items, but I, but I think they're important. Uh, one was the RPC ask for some additional funding. Uh, I think they, they provide valuable services to towns, particularly smaller towns. Uh, my towns are Jericho and Underhill, but not large towns. And I've chaired the planning commission, I've chaired the conservation commission. And those smaller towns and those commissions rely heavily on the work that they do, which is top notch work. And I, so I, I think that's a, you look like you can't quite hear me. Am I not? Yeah, not quite loud enough, but. Okay, all right. But that's, that's one thing. And I think the other one that, that that's important to me also is the Vermont Access Network, yes. uh, the ban. Uh, and I think what you have to go back and look at how they're being funded and how that funding is going away, right? Cable fees and things like that. 
whole issue of special special funds supporting programming. Uh, we just got the report from JFO on all these fees and funds in the criminal justice system and things like that. It's the same issue. Okay. And so they're coming to us to say, you know, and they, again, they're, they're one of those groups that provide valuable services to our communities. And, and I think it's something that uh, I personally feel we need to support. And again, I think we have to figure out how we're going to fund them all the time because that funding source is going to continue to decline. They're going to continue to come back and say we need help. Does anyone remember, is the Joint Fiscal Office working on a, on a some type of study regarding the ongoing funding. Yes. It, it's okay. been mentioned that there's. They, there is, they have a study a couple of years. There's ago. a report we just okay. received. Um, I, I'll have Teresa uh, put it on the website or or certainly the other day. It was on the criminal justice revenues, oh. which are very much. But 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 they took a broad look at special funds right oh. and, and and so it, it's all in that context there was a real focus on crime victim services in that report but it's a very well done report it's quite extensive yeah, so i'll make sure you get a copy of that and take a look at it thank you you can translate that to other sectors right the criminal justice system there was a, a 100 page report yeah oh, oh that's the yeah. a couple yeah. of yeah. years ago yeah and um they didn't come to any real conclusions. Well, the real conclusion was we needed to change the telecommunication law that re related to cable companies and things like that. And the reason that the Vans people have come in this year and asked for the BAA and, and for this next year as well, is that they couldn't get a commitment from the Energy and Technology Committee or the Ways and Means Committee to sit down and tackle that whole issue of the telecommunications law this year. And those two committees advised these folks to just go ask for bridge funding, which they've done. But I think if we do something like that, we need to somehow incorporate a requirement that there is another study or not another study, but you know, somebody to actually sit down and take a look at those issues and try to come up with another solution to the problem. You know, and I that we can require those committees to tackle that topic or how you do that politically but um, it's in their jurisdiction to figure out how to make this work if they agree as i think most people would that this is a legitimate function and we need to figure out how to fund it but unless they're going to come to us every year and ask for you know and this 600 is just their shortfall and under the current system, you know, their revenue keeps declining. And so next year they'll come back and ask for a million and the year after that, you know, yep. it will be more and more. So we need to figure out a long-term solution. And I don't know how we tie that into, if we were to appropriate the money, but also in the budget somehow tie in the requirement that we have to look at it seriously. Yeah, we cannot encumber the future legislatures to do anything. The only thing we can do, and I just, it's it, somehow, how do we remind ourselves that next year at the start of the biennium, we need to task those two committees with working this aspect so that, so that, you know, we're not having the same discussion right. in right. February, two years from now. Right, right. Somehow those two committees need to, and, and of course, membership can change. Sure. <laughs> and those committees and chairs and speaker and pro tem and all that can change. So you're not sure that would be the same priority in another biennium. Yep. So uh, I just want to turn to to um, Maria and ask, has there ever been a way for this committee to send itself a message into the future, so to speak, to remind itself to do something? Because at the start of a biennium, you know, you're, you're organizationally a little bit behind. This committee is a little different, but there's always a new member. Maria. Pardon? Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's it. That's the reason why I'm turning around and asking. Yeah. You, you yeah. know, because it's, yeah. it's it, again, it's going to be very easy to forget to do this. Right. And if we forget to do this, then February next year, we're going to, or and or the year after, we're going to be saying we need to do something with those committees to get them moving. So, right. I mean, is this the kind of thing that you want the administration to be part of, or is it just the legislature? Well, Marty, your suggestion? The administration should the administration be part of this, or just the legislature trying to work through the the issues with the current law? 
The conclusion of the last recording, and everybody, is it's the law that makes if it is a problem. And of course, that's the legislature. Yeah. Um, would certainly be involved in it. I mean, because it, it would be the public service department yeah. that controls or, or has purview of telecommunications and all of that. So perhaps if we were to put in the budget that the Public Service Department shall inform the relevant committees of what you know what's going on next year. To give them an update or um, yeah, okay. So I'm going to put it on my list okay. of things that we need to remember to address, yes. and then um, we can think about how to actually do it the Good. best way. Good. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank you, because that is important. I do I do agree with everything that's been said. Um, the uh, our Peg TV, they actually my my Peg TV got the name Peg, even though they're all they're all Peg TVs, but they were able to grab the name Peg. Um, it, it's it's an important aspect, and it's a, a bedrock aspect of Rollins. So, thank you, Bob. What struck you last night? The numbers, you know, I fear for the state because we're we're in a world of fifty million dollar computers, folks, and these things just pop. They're out there all over the place, just waiting for us to glance that way. And there's another fifty million dollar computer. We're working on one at DMV right now that will only be half paid for after this year. I mean, and, and when the numbers come in, I, I think that's the longest list. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I think that's the longest list of wants, social wants, for the most part, that I've ever seen in these hearings that we have. And, and, and I have nothing against any of them, but we have to I think the legislature would be, as far as I'm concerned, well advised to step lightly into the future because we've had a good pass, even through COVID, with all this money coming down from the federal government that I'm not going to have to pay for, but your kids are. You know, I, I just fear for where we're going if we keep suckering into money issues. We've got 630,000 flat people in this state, and that's it. <coughs> New businesses, it's not big. But. So, you know, I don't have any great demands. You know, I, yeah, okay. I, I, I keep my ear to the rail. I mean, I think, I, I'm sorry, no, I'm not sorry, but I come from a business world where we have to do that. We can't just say to every job you go on, well, it's going to be more money than I told you. You can't do that. So anyways, that's where I come from. And I think it's, we're entering, I think, an unstable time. I don't know any more about it than that. So you, you started off, and one of the one of the things you mentioned was the technology needs, and you said that DMV and they are there's an enormous project going it's on gigantic. over there. It, it really is in, in our just small sitting state. there waiting their turn. Yeah, sure. So so and we heard a couple of technology needs last night, uh, not not many, but it goes hand in hand with what I'm going to throw out there as a number. I think was a billion dollars that is needed to bring our technology modernization up to speed and of course 100 million a year for 10 years yeah i was right billion dollars no, no, right. by the time right. you do that but our first one is worn out yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so it's that's something i've discussed with pbs yeah so it's it's something's got to give and we don't know what the something well we know what the something is it's called all the computer systems will give but how do you fix them because uh, you know the $100 million a year over 10 years, is, and we're, we can't come up with $100 million. I don't, no? have, I don't this, know if this is the place to discuss it right. or not. No, it isn't. Uh, uh, the, kind of the theory is that now te IT technology is going to cloud-based services, and it's going to software as a service, which means that when you buy this expensive thing to start, 
vendor is required to keep it updated all the time. So, so the customer is not out buying servers, we're not buying these hardware, we're not buying a lot of other stuff. We pay high licensing fees every year, but in order, but that gives us service that is updated all the time. And so in the background, that's being done on these big new systems so that we don't get hit with an upgrade cost of $5 million, another $5 million, another $5 million. But I, I don't know if that's the way the industry is going to continue to go. I have no idea. But, you know, that's what, that's ADS's philosophy, what they're doing. They're getting away from proprietary stuff, from our owning the equipment, from our owning the servers, and you put it onto a vendor. And, and they have the responsibility of keeping it up. The business, lot, the business functionality of all that, I, I don't know enough to guide us ABS. That's the process. Us, if if I'm right, like once we upgrade to a new vendor and we lock ourselves into or say we want the, the software as a service, um, theoretically the access system, which is closing in on 50 years old, oh, yeah. the agents in human know. services, but if, if it were to be called access today and we purchased access, 10 years from now, we would have all new software behind it, and we would just continue to pay the annual fee or whatever. That's and, and, and it wouldn't be right. obsolete. Right, right. That's, that's, that's Theoretically. Important. Well, we, we do that now with like, so I get an annual subscription to Microsoft Word on my Apple laptop, and I don't have to deal with it. And I don't have to, you know, and they do all the upgrades and they take care of it. And it used to be I'd have to download upgrades right. and you'd pay for more. And, it's just it's less expensive it's more efficient and you don't have to spend all your time thinking i don't need staff it's always right yeah but it's big it. it. right up front and it's, and the annual expenses are high too. but it's yeah. a lot less expensive to pay for an off the shelf than it is proprietary because then you find out five years down the road that it isn't really what you want and the laws have changed and now you have to do something else and then you have to find technicians to recode and it's a lot more expensive i get all that yeah. but still Costs. Yep. Yeah. There's a life costs. <laughs> life cycle costs. Okay. Kimberly. Yes. Um, to the topic of VHCB, what really struck me last night is hearing clearly about both components, hearing about the conservation and agricultural based uh, work they do. I found that a good reminder. And uh, Maria had been working on a spreadsheet that Teresa just emailed to all of you. It came into your inbox at 10.32 a.m. And it lays out uh, what's been happening with the property transfer tax over time. And if you flip it over on the back, there's a section that lays out some of the uh, things we've been doing in terms of one-time funding. So I think you'll find that interesting. Thank you. Um, the other piece I think Trevor was talking about is the RPCs. I thought. Um, given all the ARPA funds that are going out and all that are going to be coming down the uh, pike in terms of the IIJA, in, uh, they yep. being the federal dollars, bolstering that capacity seems to me a wise thing. There was reference, Marty, to the RPC statutory construct, which I know is right in the same section as BHCB, but I don't actually know if it's the same. Is it a half thing? I'd have to look at that. It, it's mentioned in, and I'm in the, our unfunded liabilities report. You know, okay. That's yes, I got a report. And that. they say how much is by statute the yes. RPCs are supposed to get. It's a certain percentage broken out. Yeah. And then it will report how much is really being appropriate. Okay, good. I'll, I'll look at that. Yeah. And then, you know, Bob, I take your point on the whole technology piece because one of the places that that popped up is the discussion of children's integrative services. They were asking for a 1.8 million boost, so that would bring them to 13.3 in fiscal year 23. And then they were talking about one time money of 1.6 million for their statewide data. And Marty, I, I would love to know if you've heard anything about that from ABS or others. I, I'd have to poke into that. I remember a discussion about it, but it's been a while, and I just have to pull that back up. It, could that be part of the BFIS, the, the new BFIS program? 
I, I should know, but I so honestly agree with the call because right. we had the beef list and then we have the CC list right. and then the beef list has been renamed the CDD IS. And right. so I kind of lost <laughs> track of all the threads. Can't make this stuff up, right? I mean, no? um, and then the, the piece about frontline workers, I think that came through loud and clear. And I think I'll stop there. Those, those are some things that also caught my attention. Okay. So one of the things I want to do is the all the acronym, the acronym soup that, are, that we just heard was all in uh, uh, information systems, IT systems that was being discussed. So uh, that's what that was. And I'm not even going to go into what the acronyms mean because I'd get it wrong with myself. Related to children. Yes. Ada, what struck you last night? Now that you got a chance to well, think about it. Certainly everything everyone has spoken to. Um, and it kept, I do want to add a couple to the list, which has already been mentioned. But as a context, just earlier this week, um, a friend of mine made the inquiry as to wasn't our work here on house appropriations so much easier now. And I, I was dumbfounded. <laughs> she said, and she said, because you've got all that money. You can, you know, you do it. And I, I truly needed to explain to her the facts of our life here that at least from my pers perspective, it has made it more difficult because granted there is a lot of money, but the needs of people are acute. And how to make sure the one-time money is used absolutely on one-time expenses and that we don't dig ourselves a hole by misapplying one-time funds, all of that sort of thing. Um, and listening to, to the folks who spoke last night, so that's their reality. They would, you know, I, I firmly believe that people aren't making things up. They are expressing to us the reality that they're living in their respective worlds and perceive that we got this boatload of money without necessarily clearly understanding that we can't just say, you know, we, here it is, because we have to apply it in certain ways and there are requirements from the federal level. Uh, all of that, all that said, uh, I just wanted to say. I agree with you. People, people are giving you, wow, yeah. yeah. And my heart, it wrings my heart listening to folks describe what they're asking for because they need what's being asked for on behalf of the, the people with whom they work and knowing that we can't just say, well, of course, you know, but we do our best to, to find a way. I, I do want to make sure it's not lost in, in um, the, the multiplicity of needs which were articulated last night. But there was a request from more than a couple of people, uh, $500,000 for farm to school and five the $500 in the, gov, the, gov rec, the, the governor's recommended budget for local purchasing related to farms um, and food, you know. Yes. Um, and uh, I thought it was another way in which, as long as we keep it on the radar screen, to support our our farmers, however many of them we have still with us, as well as to provide uh, good wholesome nutrition for folks. Um, another piece that I wanted to mention, so it doesn't get lost, the Vermont Network. And I've got to get more information on this. I didn't quite understand. Uh, there were two pieces, 48,000, the Vermont network, uh, which works. To domestic to violence. Domestic yeah. violence, yes. Um, I'm thinking of folks who, who might be listening. To, yes. Um, 48,000 for legal aid 
that would cover from January through September. It's apparently a hole that they got there. For, That's uh, actually from July uh, through September. The had money covering okay. that shortfall. Oh, so this is not a new shortfall. But they won't gain access to that grant until September. Okay. Probably yeah, October. So they're trying to look to cover July to September. Yeah, it's it's probably a federal fiscal year type grant. Yeah. So it starts on the first of October there. Yeah. So, so that's that's what they're trying. So they're to do. looking to fill yes. from July, July three three four months. They Correct. Yeah. Forty eight thousand, and then a hundred thousand. Something about housing assessment. Yes. And and it wasn't the same kind of housing issue that we we think of. Uh, I have, I have, I have I, information. Yeah, I have something from them on that. That's I, I can forward that. Okay. Information about that. And then it's, just it's transitional housing. Yeah. Transition. Oh, transition. It's actually a study. Look at that. Apparently, that piece has been missing from other work that's been done. There, there was a related transitional housing kind of thing that I've never, that I've not heard before at, at our hearings. It was from Mr. Dalton talking about a special, a, a, a different kind of recovery house. We had recovery house. Yes. It was for a specialized recovery center for justice involved yes. individuals. Yes. And I thought that that merited a little, a little delving into to find out yep. just what, if, if we've got a population for which there is no appropriate kind of uh, service so we ought to some, it, it's it's the uh, the recovery housing network yeah. around the state they yeah. they each do things a little differently they all offer a drop-in center to help people that are looking to to recover um, without uh, without substituting one substance um, for for the substance that they've become addicted to uh, so it's it's a sober recovery type type of type of thing. Turning point centers do this. Some of the turning point centers actually go into the local jails. I know the one in Rome does goes into the local jail and begins to work with the inmates in the local jail. Not just before they're they're going to get out, but they work with the inmates in the local jail to try to to help them get clean, such that when they do come out, they can they can continue down that path. It's, it's, it is as hard a thing to do, I think, as anything that any human would ever endeavor to do, which is try to you know, change the way that they daily function. So it's, it's really important what this group, and I, I have asked for more information, um, the, the Recovery Center for Justice Involved Youth would, be, would work uh, at all of our um, jails to help that occur. So I need to find out how they would uh, would overlap with 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 recovery house with recovery uh, centers that already do it. But yes, the question. This reminds me of a sticky note that I popped up. Uh, we heard about the tobacco fund settlement going away, but we also heard from Attorney General Donovan and others about a potential opioid settlement, and that would frankly seem a really natural fit, but I don't know where things stand with that, but that's just something that when I heard Tom Dalton speaking, I was like, what's up with the opioid settlement funds? And that might be something to ask the AG's office about. I don't know. And, and who is it? Oh, is it, it was Josh Diamond. Yes, but who is it among us that has the AG's office? I'm sorry. Do you have attorney general? Yes. Yeah, I'm just curious, Jim, what might be happening with the opioid settlement funds? Because we heard uh, last night about, you know, tobacco settlement funds going away and to yeah. Nate and Peter's discussion about recovery housing. So the, uh, the yeah. funds, as I understand it, are very restrictive to certain categories. And the um, Human Services Committee uh, is working on legislation that will uh, set up a special fund, which I guess is required. 15% um, of the uh, of the 15% will go to the general fund, but it's got to still be used for those opioid uh, related purposes. And while you're looking that up, um, I will add this during my discussions with the Vermont Department of Health, and I may have mentioned this already, but I'll mention it again. Um, the recovery houses, the turning points uh, that we have out in Vermont, um, 
they have not been eligible to receive Medicaid money because they're not under the 1115 waiver. So this year, when the Department of, when the Agency of Human Services uh, went to renew the 1115 waiver with the federal government CMS, they asked that to be included. So if it, uh, if it, and let's face it, it's a, a pretty minuscule codicil of, of a very large document. If that is in fact included, it will allow the, the turning point centers to then be, uh, we can allocate Medicaid funding to them in the future, which would, which would really help. Now it won't be for this budget. It would right. be for the next year's budget, but yes. So if on my notes, 70% of the settlement and when I say settlement, there's 53 million over 18 years, and then there's a 12 and a half million over 10 years. There was two different settlements. Uh, one was with J and J, and the other is whoever was all involved in the bigger one or something. 70 percent of those monies um, go into a uh, what they call an abatement fund, which is what Human Services is working on. 15% of that money goes to actual towns for related purposes, and 15% will go into the general fund for related purposes. So I think the bumper guards for all this will be in human services for a budget. Uh, now, I asked a question and I didn't get an answer no. I said, we spend a lot of general fund money for you know, um, these related issues. Um, and uh, it may be something that we can say we're spending, yes, we're spending 10 million on, and part of that can go towards this, or we can get some reimbursement. But I, I, I think we'll have to wait so we see human services. So one of the things, and just to let everybody know time-wise, I wanna finish in about three or four minutes here. I have an 11.15 with a, with a budget. Uh, so I would like to finish up and then give the, each of you time to, to work through what you need to do. We always have something to do, period. Um, the other thing, uh, obviously we have, uh, we have written input that, that was given us and I haven't read any of it yet. I mean, it was last night, so I haven't read any of it yet. So we do need to do that. Maybe you, you look, you look just, like you have something else. Just because uh, I think Kimberly first brought it up, the tobacco fund. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think we've all heard in writing from many of us have heard in writing about the million dollars yes. to go toward tobacco uh, <coughs> cessation. So, Maria, would you send that sheet to everyone, please? The tobacco yeah. sheet, please. Yes, yeah, Thank you. Um, I asked for this a month ago. He's always got it. So, uh, this will this will kind of update it. Um, I'm not going to go any further because it's not fresh in my memory exactly what our status is. But yes, yeah. So there's there's a sheet that uh, that explains where we are uh, with that. But it's the master settlement is not necessarily going away. I just am not sure that we're spending enough money to be able to to draw down or match. So but I'm I need to I don't don't take that to the bank. I need to refresh my memory. And from a health perspective. So, so Peter in the AG's um, budget book. They actually list the amount per year. There was a bump for a few years because of another correct settlement, correct supplementary settlement. But it, it surprised me that it's still going on. It's like twenty-two million dollars a year. Correct. Um, so it's it's still there. Yep. It's the health folks we've been hearing from with regard to that one million dollar act. Correct. The hard folks who answer. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, okay. Well, that was. Um, I think that that was helpful. Um, kind of got some of the issues out on the table. It caused us to think out loud what we, you know, what we thought of last night, and that's always helpful to us. Um, obviously, we have a another uh, another public testimony at three o'clock today, uh, and in between then we have. Um, have a budget at one o'clock. It's the National Guard is coming in at one. Um, we've got them until one forty-five. So uh, uh, and then uh, and then we'll adjourn. And then at three o'clock, we'll start our public hearing.